Before we dive into the specifics, I am aware of your thoughts. I agree with you when you think, I cannot wear this watch, as it is 50 millimeters in diameter and more than 20 millimeters thick. I'm talking about a small portion that will be able to appreciate this watch, solely on the wrists truly. However, something extremely important about this item needs to be looked into and discussed. So let's get started. Full Ocean Depth, the Rolex Sea Dweller Deep Sea Challenge, Titanium. Rolex has just released the Deep Sea Challenge Sea Dweller as part of the ongoing depth measuring competition. For several reasons, this dive watch is extremely technological and sets many other records. Before delving into the details, the Mariana Trench has allowed scientists to reach a depth of 11,034 meters in the ocean as of this video. And while this could vary by 10 or even 100 meters, the greatest rating appears to be 11,000 meters. What then makes this deep sea unique? Anyone can purchase it because it is commercially available. However, it can also descend to the known bottom of our ocean. That's crazy! Rolex and Omega are currently in intense combat, and you may know that the 2012 Deep Sea Challenge took place. James Cameron lowered his submersible to a depth of at least 10,000 meters. Various innovative technologies were incorporated to create a sea creature that could perform this task, such as the highly inventive and unusual ring lock mechanism. And to counter Rolex's prediction model of the time, Omega just recently brought out the Ultra Deep, which travels down to 6,000 meters and is ludicrous as a death rating. So Rolex has, in essence, just doubled that number. The question then is to ask, once you reach the depth limit, where else can you go? Of course, if we're talking about space, you could always travel further distances. But you know that the seafloor is finite, and what do you do next? For the first time, RLX Titanium is being used throughout a watch. However, contrary to popular belief, Titanium was previously only used on the case backs of submersibles. But for them, this is a very new venture. What makes it unique is that it's made of its distinctive substance and grade 5 titanium, which is much more highly regarded and valued. Now, thank you for reaching this point. Make sure to finish this video to know more. But before we continue, don't forget to subscribe if you're new to this channel and like, comment, share, and hit the notification bell for more upcoming videos like this. As I've stated countless times, titanium is an excellent material for a dive watch, hypoallergenic, but more importantly, entirely corrosive resistant in salt water, the most challenging water for a mechanical device. Although titanium is prone to oxidation, it doesn't oxidize as quickly as brass, bronze, or many other metals. And that's what I genuinely enjoy about this piece. You won't notice its weight while wearing it. The watch weighs perhaps about a third of what it would if made entirely of steel. It will therefore wear reasonably well despite having a diameter of 50 millimeters and a thickness of 20 mils. This piece's simplicity is something I can also greatly appreciate. Its matte dial and lack of a date complication make it highly classy and straightforward. A minor case thickness is possible because of a thinner internal movement. However, this new model also includes an intriguing helium escape file, and I wonder if that feature is even required for a watch of this caliber. The sapphire crystal measures 9.5 millimeters in diameter by itself, so the numerals are simply overkilled. One centimeter thick there. Many watch casings on the market now aren't even that thick. The watch's dial is matte black, but the bezel is exceptionally polished. I would appreciate it if the bezel were matte to match the titanium finish, just to improve visibility, although surfaces should be left unpolished, especially if you're in the water. Nothing should reflect according to you. However, if you look to the side of the case, there is now a new, totally brushed flank, which is a good change because it has brought chamfers back to the side of the case. Looks wonderful, something we haven't seen in a very long time. As you can see, 
The trip lock crown system now has a dash in the middle, indicating that it is made of titanium metal, as far as I am aware. Because of this, we're not dealing with a dazzling watch with anything truly novel. Instead, it's just an improvement over the previous model. It's larger and heavier. It still looks somewhat attractive despite employing a more sophisticated material on the outside. One is still up for debate. However, it's the anniversary celebration of James Cameron's venture to the bottom of the trench. Finally, after a few years, a dive watch that can go to that depth and even further is now commercially available. The brushing on the bracelets and the titanium is pretty aggressive, shocking me based on the press photographs I've seen thus far. It appears to be a prototype, not an official production model. It should be addressed when we see accurate production models. Use sandpaper and an additional 100 grit. The question remains, has the gold standard been met? Has the least amount of depth been accomplished? Can we now accept this as the norm and continue? Can we now look to other ventures? Or is Omega going to respond with a watch that can go further than ever known? I'm at a loss for words. I don't know anymore. It's crucial to emphasize that these situations are thick for a reason. This is the sole instance in which the case's thickness is necessary. It couldn't handle the pressure of that depth if it were any smaller. Yes, this watch might be 36 millimeters in diameter and have a case thickness of more than 20 millimeters. Still, they had to make it 50 millimeters in diameter to balance those proportions and scales and make it look somewhat reasonable and balanced. These timepieces' thickness has nothing to do with aesthetics. Instead, structural stiffness is the topic. The ring lock method is fascinating. The ring serves as a larger footprint and surface area for the crystal to push against when it is under strain from the outside world. When we compare it to Omega's Ultra Deep, they don't use the system. Instead, they employ liquid metal technology, which is extremely intriguing. They appear to have a superior system that permits Crystal to remain where she is, owing to the absence of a helium escape valve. They think their cases are far more hermetically sealed, and engineering is what it comes down to in the end. You don't need it if your case is so tightly sealed that it only needs some of this extra equipment. I don't know if the helium escape valve is just a novelty, or if it's a nod to the first aquatic creatures and the technology they used. Because keeping the crystals from popping out was the main concern there. These casings have been thoroughly designed and constructed at this stage with such tight tolerances. These extra systems are not necessary. If you go back to the beginning, the simplicity of this watch is what makes it so remarkable. It displays like any other Rolex Submariner or Marine creature. A watch that communicates quietly or not so subtly enough to travel past the known depths of the earth is now available to dive watch enthusiasts for the first time. I've witnessed a lot of debate. Numerous critics of this watch claim that Rolex is very of course, that they are not responsible, and that the watch is ludicrous. However, now that I see it, I believe it to be in class. It's a company that doesn't boast that its watch can now dive more profoundly than any other dive watch has ever been able to. However, despite being a dazzling metal, titanium communicates this in the most understated manner imaginable. It doesn't use brilliant spot colors, yellow gold, blue accents or anything associated with a deep sea challenger or Kawasaki green. Instead, it has a matte black dial without a date and a large number to go with it. This sets Rolex apart from the competition. Yes, they do occasionally give us oddities and bizarre color combinations. You are most likely familiar with left-hand drives and unnecessary crown guards on timepieces. However, they have the option to take this action. When we take a step back and consider it, we might conclude that it has been done with minimal effort. Nevertheless, that is the point. You're aware that it's kind of sleeper. It is the expandable animal you may discover at the ocean's bottom. While it is underground, it has no energy, but able to bear incredible pressure at depths beyond our comprehension. It's been a long day and for the first time, 
professional divers may find a watch that says it can go to the planet's deepest point. And that's it! Thank you for watching! Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to this channel. Also, please leave a comment down below. Before you leave, did you know that every year at this time, the Rolex community becomes restless as they wonder what the company will accomplish in the coming year? In the past, we have always looked forward to seeing new Rolex models. But after they are revealed, we frequently find ourselves wanting more. So if you want to know Rolex 2023 updates and predictions, what to expect? Make sure to click and watch this video here. See you there!